So when I was growing up, my father took his driving test mm -hmm. and um, he drove a manual car and to be fair to him, he was an average sort of driver and he passed it, he failed it three or four times before he passed it. When I took my driving test, I passed it first time. Now you've got to do the written test that you're talking about. So this is an evolution of standards based on the amount of traffic that's now on the roads. You come to Pakistan, people don't drive at 70, 80 miles an hour. On the motorways in England, they drive at 120 miles an hour. So you have to bring in regulations to suit the growth of the population in the exercise of driving. You don't have that volume here at the moment. At the end of the day, people in, in Pakistan, I've been driving for the last three or four days, and people in Pakistan don't know which way to go, don't know how a roundabout works. But at the end of the day, the system that's in place works for Pakistan. You can't turn around and say we're behind everybody else because at the end of the day, it could be 15 to 20 years from now where all this becomes sensible, where a lot more people like you go to Europe, get educated, come back and say, let's educate people on how to drive better. Because at the end of the day, driving here is, uh, is a means from getting to A to B. Whereas in England and the Western world, a driving license is as good as a degree. It gives you that opportunity to go out and do other things. Two things if you go to Europe. Number one, understand about your liquor license because you can work in any bar, which means you can get about the place. And number two is get a driving license because a driving license makes you mobile and you can do more jobs, you can be a delivery boy, etc, etc. There's not that requirement in Pakistan just yet. And it's not to say it won't be in 20 years time or 50 years time. But what you're saying is we need all this education. Yes, of course you do. But education is required when it's useful to the population. And you've got such a, a major change to happen that education is not necessarily the primary one you should be thinking about. What you should be thinking about is the balance of payments and the money that's in the country and getting people into jobs. Jobs bring revenue, revenue brings economic growth and then economic growth allows you to invest in education for the future. And you have a youth of 65% here. So you don't have to solve the world tonight. We can solve it over the next 40 years, but someone like yourself, a prominent businessman, has got to be able to sit down and look at the people around them and say, let's put a 40-year plan in place. Because if you don't benefit from it, and your kids don't benefit from it, you will live to see your grandchildren benefit from it. And that's what Pakistan needs. It needs that leadership, and it needs that structure, but it needs to be a long-term thing. You just walk the beach, and I've said to you, don't try and lose weight as a New Year's resolution. But say, in the next 12 months, I'm going to lose five pounds. That's a 12-month resolution. You put weight on over time. Allow yourself to lose it over time. And at the same time, Pakistan has fallen behind over time. Let's not try and fix it in 10 years. Set a 50-year plan, and you can change so many things if you did it that way. But it's got to start with somebody, and I think Susanna is a prime example of what's required here. It's someone that wants to do little things step at a time and you'll make quantum leaps because look at your children first thing is nature says it has to roll over then it has to stick its bottom in the air then it needs to crawl all before a child can stand and then when a child stands the first thing it will do it will develop the, the, the character and the courage to run all of a sudden the child is now walking that's nature and you cannot cheat that nature is between 12 and two years time nature so if you can't cheat nature don't try and cheat economic growth by buying it or trying to advance it for no rhyme or reason because at the end of the day it's going to take time britain is not where it is in the last 10 years britain's where it is in the last 100 years india is, is struggling with the same issues western germany eastern germany all these countries have evolved over time give your nation time but put a stake in the ground and say there's a 50 year plan Let's change. But we have first. to continue that's on that plan because that's the problem. The, plan, and that's the problem. The problem is Persevere. That everyone gets frustrated mm. and they want a quick fix. And you can't have a quick fix. It's like weight. You cannot fix weight on your body unless you allow yourself time to lose it. And that means you have to develop a good exercise program. You have to develop a good nutrition program. You have to develop a good education in your head program. And you have to stick to them. And if you stick to them, you're sticking to your 50 year plan. I mean, people come along and try and cheat you and say, oh, if you run faster, you'll lose more weight. Or if you do this, you'll lose more weight. Say, you know what, I've got a plan. You stick it to the plan, it's coming off gradually. So in terms of economic growth, if you have a 50-year plan and people come and try and cheat it and make it happen faster, just think, I can't get my child to run if you're six months old. Nature will decide when that happens.
you cannot get Pakistan to quantum leap. Our plan, our 50 years plan will decide what happens. And that's what needs to happen in this place. I've, I've never met, in all my time here, I've never met anybody that's rude to me. You come to Australia, everybody's rude to you. Everybody's giving you shit, but in this country, no one's been rude to me. In Australia, you come to Australia, somebody will pick on you within five minutes, because, you know, that's... that's no just, manners. That's no man. No manners. You complain about lack of manners here, lack of manners in Australia, lack of manners in Italy, in Spain. People are just generally rude, and they call themselves the forward society. Nobody's been rude to me. No one's been rude to her. I think what needs to happen is more people like Susanna need to talk to people like you, and then plans have to be put in place. And work the plan. If you, if you fail to plan for it, you're planning to fail. It's as simple as that.